Well, hey guys, good morning. What is happening? What's going on out there this morning, wherever you are? Hope you're having a great start to your day. Uh, or maybe you're catching this on the replay later in the day. Whatever. Um, let's make it a great day, huh? Hey, look, I got a point from you, <laughs> point from you, for you. Uh, this is a uh, national... National 60s Grass, uh, a couple years ago, Mission Hills Country Club. Uh, Ross Persons with the serve, his partners, Bruce Nichols. Wesley Cash, returning serve, and Mark Vines uh, is his partner up at net. And what we're going to work on today is kind of the fundamentals. What are the, what are the real keys to being able to handle um, a reflex volley, right? And there's really some technique to it. Uh, that I want to kind of go through, right? So look, Wesley with a big forehand return, super return. And look, I, I know from the, from the start of this point, a lot of you are going to say, uh, what's Bruce doing here looking back, right, at, at his partner Ross? You know, you should never look back. That's just kind of like one of the, apparently the one fundamentals of doubles is you never look back. I disagree. And in fact, you can find all kinds of examples of the Bryan brothers, what the greatest doubles team of all time, where on some situations, some balls, they look back. You can't tell me that the Bryan brothers never, ever look back to see what their partner's about to do. And in this case, Bruce Nichols does look back. I totally agree with it. I mean, we're talking about an NCAA doubles champion. We're talking about a guy who won uh, two two ATP pro doubles titles back in the day. So who are we to say that you should never, ever look back? Okay, enough of that rant right there. Um, anyway, Bruce does look back. And look, this is, a, this is a tricky half volley for Ross, right? And he does his best to concentrate on it and get it cross court. But as he's looking down to play his half volley, Mark Vines starts to lurk into the middle. And he's giving up up the line, right? If Ross wants to redirect this up the line, more power to him, Mark's thinking. But he's guessing that it's going to be a cross-court shot. And so, look, as soon as Bruce sees that Bruce, right here, sees that his partner Ross is going back cross-court, first thing he does, he stops looking at the ball and he looks at Mark to see if Mark's poaching. And sure enough, Mark's on the move. So, look, here's thing one. Once you, once you determine that there's going to be a move, there's going to be a poach, and you're, you're right up in, you know, harm's way, right? The first thing you got to do is you just got to accept reality and, and not kind of shirk away from the situation because there, there is an opportunity for you. Right. And and that is kind of down the line here in terms of fundamentals on how to reflex. Number one is completely face that opponent who's moving, who's about to volley into you. Right. Um, number two is that just assume it's coming at you. Assume it's coming to you. It might not. Mark might play this volley back cross court. Right. We don't know. But just assume it's coming to you. So number one completely face the player, right? Don't start turning the shoulder away and this kind of thing. Face the player. Number two is assume it's coming to you. Number three is you got to have really soft hands. If you get nervous, if you get tight, if you get grippy on the racket handle, you won't be able to react nearly as quickly um, as you want to be able to, right, with this reflex volley. So make sure that your hands are really soft on the racket. Number four is, look, assume that you're going to be able to handle this and that you've got a real opportunity. Well, what's that opportunity? Well, look, I mean, all of this court over here is completely wide open because of the poach. And so in the back of your mind, you're knowing that, well, if I can redirect this anywhere over there, even if it's just a bunt, I think I'll be okay, right? So, Number one, face that opponent. Number two, assume it's coming to you. Number three, soft hands. And then number four is you just, you just realize, well, what's the open court if I can handle this thing? And the open court is over there uh, back where Mark was. 
and all you're doing is just trying to somehow redirect it. And in this case, all right, you get a little fortunate with the lead cord. That's life. That's, you know, that's the big leagues right there. It happens a lot. And not much, you know, I wouldn't be going with the big apology thing. I mean, the guy was going at you anyway. So that's that's kind of it. So look, um, all of this is kind of a guessing game, right? Uh, and, and mostly the guessing game is a couple of things. Number one is going to be Ross's have volley. He's just trying to handle this thing. And he's already committed to going back cross court, right? Rather than up the line. He's not looking at Mark. He's just, he's guessing that Mark's not going to move, right? Well, let's put it on Mark. Mark is now guessing that Ross is going cross court. He's not going up the line, right? And Bruce is now guessing that Mark's going to play his, his poach volley right at him. And that's okay, right? And so there you have it. Look, would love to read your feedback uh, down below uh, in, in the comments area. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this thing in real time for you, and then I'll do a slow-mo but, uh, yeah, I mean, you can either leave your comments down below, your questions down below in the comments area, but you can also, uh, you can also shoot me an email, brent at webtennis.com, if you prefer. Keep it private. Guys, that's it for me today. It's time for all of us. we got to get out there. Out there. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Guys, let's do this again tomorrow. Well, hi, it is Brent back here with you. Really hope you enjoyed this episode of What's the Right Shot. What I've got for you down below is a link that will take you to the information page about a course I've got that's going to show you what are the three habits that you've really got to build so that you can offensively drive a topspin forehand rally ball, and especially to be able to do that from a foot or two inside the baseline and do it without risking an unforced error. Right down below is the link to that, to that information page. Go ahead and click it.